Hey everyone, uh, Dr. Mungli here. So it's been a long time, around like four months that I could not make video because I was busy with the administrative work because I got into a, a new role as an administrator as a Dean of Student Affairs along with my teaching responsibility as a professor in biochemistry. Anyway, so I moved into a new office and now I... a big uh, white board here as you can see this is the big white full board and this is the fantastic board to teach you fatty acid synthesis because there are a lot of reaction in this particular uh, pathway so use this long board here so and teach you fatty acid synthesis let's get into that now the fatty acid biosynthesis it will be going on predominantly in the liver and uh, going on in the lactating mammary glands and also to certain extent fatty acid synthesis will go on in the adipose tissue. Now what are the things that are needed for fatty acid to be synthesized? Note that the dietary lipids that we con uh, consume, that the dietary fatty acids that we consume, they can become part of the triacyl glycerol because already fatty acid is already coming in the form of diet. And also it can be used for energy purpose. Now what synthesizes fatty acid is excess carbohydrates. So this is the most important thing that you got to remember. How exactly consumption of excess carbohydrates can go into fatty acid synthesis. And also if you consume excess proteins. So proteins can be converted into acetyl uh, in the form of glucose or maybe uh, some of the protein degrad amino acid degradation products can form acetyl -CoA. And that can also go into fatty acid synthesis. It means excess carbohydrates predominantly flood into fatty acid synthesis and sometimes excess proteins can also go into fatty acid synthesis. Now let me explain what are the uh, what is the role of insulin in diverting excess carbohydrates into fatty acid synthesis. Now the insulin is an anabolic hormone, it is going to make sure that the glycolysis is going on in the liver. So uh, how it starts? So very first enzyme in glycolysis in the liver is glucokinase. So insulin is going to induce glucokinase and then the uh, rate limiting and regulated enzyme in glycolysis is uh, phosphofructokinase, one enzyme. So how insulin is going to keep this enzyme active? So Insulin is going to maintain a dephosphorylated form of PFK2 enzyme and thereby uh, it is going to increase fructose 2,6-base phosphate and that is going to keep PFK1 active. So if you want to understand how exactly PFK1 is regulated, I have a video, uh, uh, the link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing at the right corner right now. Now what else insulin does? Apart from keeping PFK1 and PFK2 active, insulin is going to make sure that pyruvate kinase is in dephosphorylated condition and that is active and down the line insulin is going to make sure uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is active thereby pyruvate is converted into acetyl -CoA. Now what will happen to the acetyl -CoA? Acetyl -CoA gets into the TCA cycle and in the TCA cycle acetyl -CoA converted into citrate. Now, especially when the person is in well-fed condition and resting and also ate a lot of carbohydrate food. So, that means TCA cycle is saturated. So, during that condition what happens? Isocitrate dehydrogenase is negatively modulated and then there is increase in citrate in the matrix of mitochondria. Regulation of TCA cycle. So, I have a video. The link for that is there in the description below. It is also appearing in the upper right corner. Now, what will happen to the citrate that is accumulated in the matrix of mitochondria? So, now the citrate is now moving out of mitochondria into the cytoplasm by citrate transporter. Now, what happens to the citrate in the cytoplasm? Citrate is broken down back into acetyl-CoA by citrate lyase enzyme and this enzyme is also kept active by insulin. So, what citrate lyase does? Citrate lyase, it's going to break down citrate into acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate. Now, acetyl-CoA, now it is diverted into fatty acid synthesis. Oxaloacetate is converted into malate and malate is converted back into pyruvate by malic enzyme in the cytoplasm. And that malic enzyme provides an additional source of NADPH plus H plus for fatty acid biosynthesis. 
So the fatty acid biosynthesis needs NADPH plus. Predominantly, it will come from pentose phosphate pathway. Now, the malic enzyme is an additional source for NADPH plus in the liver. Now, let's talk about acetyl CoA, which is present in the cytoplasm. Now, so the acetyl CoA present in the cytoplasm, it is converted into melanyl CoA. So, to two carbon acetyl CoA, it is converted into three carbon melanyl CoA by an enzyme called acetyl CoA carboxylase. So, this acetyl CoA carboxylase, what it does, it is going to bring carbon dioxide and condense that with acetyl CoA to make the three carbon melanyl CoA. That means out of three carbons in a melanyl CoA, two carbons are coming from acetyl CoA, one carbon is coming from carbon dioxide. So, acetyl CoA carboxylase is the rate limiting enzyme, it is the most regulated enzyme in fatty acid biosynthesis. So, there are certain positive modulators, certain negative modulators working on this. Insulin and glucagon is going to control the activity of acetyl CoA carboxylase. This is one of the important concepts that you got to remember. So, I have a video on regulation of acetyl CoA carboxylase, the reaction that I have explained about acetyl CoA carboxylase. Link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing in the upper right corner. So, you got now make sure you watch acetyl CoA carboxylase reaction and also make sure you understand how acetyl CoA carboxylase is regulated in our body. That's very important. Now, once you know uh, how the acetyl CoA carboxylase reaction goes on, so acetyl CoA converting into melanyl CoA and that melanyl CoA is now getting into fatty acid synthase complex. Now, what is this fatty acid synthase complex? And also note that acetyl CoA carboxylase is kept active by insulin, it is there in the regulation. Now, the fatty acid synthase complex, it is a used complex, it has got uh, 16 subunits. So, what are those subunits here? So, the I have given you the figure here, so as it is shown in the figure, so there are 16 subunits in that 14 subunits are enzyme subunits and there are two ACP molecules that is acyl carrier protein. So, it means uh, this uh, use uh, 16 subunit complex can be divided into two parts, two functional division is given. So, on the left side you have one functional division, on the right side you have another functional division. So, uh, that means there are seven enzymes and one ACP protein on the left side, on the right side again there are seven enzymes and one ACP protein. So, that means fatty acid synthase complex, all enzymes are together here and insulin is going to make sure it is going to induce this particular multi enzyme complex thereby fatty acid synthesis is going on at an optimum and efficient way. Now, let us get into how exactly fatty acid synthase complex works here. So, I have written here, so this is what is the fatty acid synthase complex. So, it is just in short, I have uh, divided the fatty acid synthase complex into left half and the right half of fatty acid synthase complex. So, all I am going to do now is going, I am going to explain what is going on in the right half of the fatty acid synthase complex and uh, whatever I am explaining on the right half of the fatty acid synthase complex, same thing will be going on on the left half of the fatty acid synthase complex. That means whenever fatty acid synthase complex is working, two fatty acids are synthesized simultaneously, remember that. So, fatty acid synthase complex, left side one fatty acid synthesized, right side another fatty acid is synthesized. Let us move on to see um, how fatty acid is synthesized on the right side. Now, the very first reaction that is going on in the fatty acid synthesis is the original molecule of acetyl CoA, unmodified acetyl CoA gets into the fatty acid synthesis in the cytoplasm. So, all this fatty acid synthase complex is in the cytoplasm and unmodified original acetyl CoA molecules get into the fatty acid synthesis and what we are doing here is we are going to color code the carbons present in acetyl CoA and we are going to use red colored for acetyl CoA carbons. As you all know acetyl CoA is two carbon molecule. So, that means two carbon red color carbons getting into acetyl fatty acid synthase complex. So, because this color coding is important for us to track where these carbons are going or where these carbons are present in the end product. Okay? Now, acetyl CoA once it gets into the fatty acid synthase complex, it is going to go and bind to ACPSH. As I have shown here, here, acyl carrier protein has got thiol group, 
your acetylcoase is going to bind to this thiol group and that is what is shown here. So the acetylcoase, so coase is released, acid two carbons are bound to ACP position here. Now we have a cysteine position which is vacant here. It's basically a keto acyl synthase enzyme. It has got a cysteine thiol group and that is vacant here. So what happens is, so this, uh, these two carbons, they are going to be moved to the cysteine acid position. This job is done by acetyl transacylase enzyme. So, so that is that there is a movement of these two carbons from ACP position to the cysteine position. Note that these are red color carbons. They are coming from acetyl -coy. Always uh, keep an eye on the color there and that is what we will give you the source of those carbons. Now, your ACP position is vacant now. Cysteine position has got two carbon coming from acetyl -CoA. Now, what comes is the melanyl CoA molecule. So, this is what is the melanyl CoA which is coming into the reaction, and that melanyl CoA it is synthesized by acetyl CoA carboxylase. As I explained to you before, acetyl CoA carboxylase is the regulated and rate limiting enzyme in fatty acid synthesis. So, acetyl CoA, sorry, melanyl CoA, it has three carbons. So, two carbons coming from acetyl CoA and one carbon coming from carbon dioxide. So, this is three carbon melanyl CoA molecule which is synthesized by acetyl CoA carboxylase enzyme, rate limiting and regulated enzyme in fatty acid synthesis. So, what will happen to this melanyl CoA? Melanyl CoA will go and bind to ACP SH position here, acyl carrier protein thiol group is going to receive that melanyl CoA. So CoA is uh, going out, three carbons are bound to ACP position. Now we have these three carbons here coming from melanyl CoA. Note that carbon dioxide is colored differently because acetyl CoA carboxylase enzyme, uh, what it does is, it is going to combine acetyl CoA with the carbon dioxide to make melanyl CoA. I told you before, out of three carbons in a melanyl CoA molecule, Two carbon is coming from acetyl CoA, one carbon is coming from carbon dioxide. That is why this is colored differently. That's the blue color there. So now what will happen to these three carbons? So uh, in cysteine position, we have uh, two carbon coming from original acetyl CoA molecule. And ACP position, we have three carbons coming from melanyl CoA molecule. So there will be a nucleophilic attack that will go on from the acetyl CoA carbons onto melanyl CoA carbons. Because of this nucleophilic attack, what happens? There is a break, the release of carbon dioxide. This carboxyl group is released as carbon dioxide. And this particular reaction, we refer it as condensation and decarboxylation reaction, C and D. Condensation and decarboxylation reaction. So, after this condensation and decarboxylation reaction, we have four carbon molecule which is attached to ACP position. So it is C double bond O, CH2, C double bond O, CH3. What we are intended to do is, we are intended to synthesize a fatty acid and you can see the structure of fatty acid here, it is carboxyl group, hydrocarbon chain is there, there is no double bond and ends with the methyl group. So we are, our intention is to make a fat, saturated fatty acid, but it is, there is a keto group here, so we need to reduce this keto group. So what happens? So there will be reduction process going on done by keto acyl reductase enzymes. So you don't need to know uh, concentrate too much on these enzymes here. So the keto keto group is there. So that is why keto acyl reductase enzyme it is going to reduce this keto group. For that reduction process, we need a reducing molecule, and that reducing molecule is NADPH plus H plus, which is predominantly coming from pentose phosphate pathway. Now NADPH plus is oxidized into NADP plus, so with thereby a keto group is reduced into alcohol group here. So as you can see, keto group C double bond O is now converted into CHOH. So there is a reduction process and the proton H and H is coming from NADPH plus H plus. That's what is the reduction done by uh, keto acyl reductase enzyme. Now. So this hydroxyl group has to be further converted into C double bond H here. So we don't want hydroxyl group. As you can see here, palmitate do not have hydroxyl group. So we don't want hydroxyl group. So that has to undergo dehydration. This job is done by dehydratase enzyme. So I'll just write it as D there. So dehydratase removes water molecule. 
so that means there is introduction of double bond so here c double bond c double bond o ch double bond ch ch3 and note that we don't want double bond also because your palmitate do not have double bond it's a saturated fatty acid we don't want double bond so this double bond has to be reduced again and that process needs another reduction process so we use one more molecule of nadph plus h plus which is oxidized into nadp plus and the double bonds are reduced here so you got this molecule now so c double bond o ch2 ch ch3 so this is a kind of four carbon fatty acid here because this c double bond o this portion can be released as coo minus so that becomes coo minus like this then we have ch2 uh, ch2 here and ch3 so ch2 ch2 and like that hydrocarbon chain so that means we have four reactions that are done here one is condensation decarboxylation where there is a removal of carbon dioxide reduction dehydration reduction at the end of these four reactions that is condensation decarboxylation reduction dehydration reduction so you are going to get a saturated fatty acid here if you want to release this fatty acid if you cut this bond here you can release four carbon fatty acid which is a saturated fatty acid so this is how we have synthesized a saturated fatty acid which is four carbon but our intention is to synthesize a palmitate molecule which is uh, 16 carbon fatty acid this is a 16 carbon saturated fatty acid our intention is to synthesize 16 carbon saturated fatty acid so we just synthesized four carbon saturated fatty acid so what should happen you just need to repeat the same reactions now so acp position you have four carbon fatty acid cysteine position is vacant here so what happens is you are going to move this entire four carbon molecule from acp position into cysteine position and that's what happened here so we have cysteine position a uh, four carbon molecule ac position is acp position is free now so what happens so you are going to bring one more melanyl coa molecule so how do you get melanyl coa molecule so you get melanyl coa from acetyl coa carboxylase that is why acetyl coa carboxylase is important why because every time when you want to add two two carbons to this four carbon molecule see this four carbon molecule two carbons last two carbons are coming from acetyl coa red color so rest of the carbons are added to this side here so every time you are going to add two two carbons to this carboxyl side and push this red colors on the other side okay and this is what is going to happen now so who is going to give those two carbons every time it is given by melanyl coa melanyl coa carbons how do you get melanyl coa melanyl coa you are going to get from acetyl coa carboxylase that is why acetyl coa carboxylase enzyme is a rate limiting enzyme it's the most regulated enzyme because it's going to provide every time melanyl coa so only one time you get this red colored original acetyl coa molecules later on it is all about melanyl coa providing those two carbons let's see what happens so the melanyl coa comes in which is uh, brought in by melanyl coa transacylase enzyme so what it does it is going to uh, transfer melanyl coa to acp position so your melanyl coa is right now here three carbon and your cysteine sh has got four carbon molecule which was synthesized here so that is present in the cysteine sh position so what happens same four reaction condensation decarboxylation right this we have seen condensation decarboxylation in the same way there is condensation decarboxylation is going to happen that means this four carbon molecule will have a nucleophilic attack on this particular carbon on the melanyl coa so what will happen so there is a removal of carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is removed so your molecule is now having six carbons here which is in the acp position okay so we have c double bond o ch2 c double bond o ch2 ch2 ch3 so the problem is there is a keto group here we don't clearly we don't want keto group in a fatty acid molecule again same thing like what we are seeing here to remove the keto group we did the reduction so we are going to redo reduction one more time so nadp H plus is used nadp released so reduction is done and after that there was a hydroxyl group similarly there will be hydroxyl group here so we are going to do dehydration so we are going to de do dehydration one more time here 
and after that there was a double bond so like that there will be double bond here in this molecule also so we are going to do one more reduction so at the end of it all we got a 6 carbon saturated molecule here C double bond o, which is released as carboxyl group CH2, 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 CH3 hydrocarbon chain that means we have elongated 4 carbon previously 4 carbon fatty acid into 6 carbons here Okay, so what did we do? So we just took two carbons from alanyl CoA and attached to the carboxyl side here. So that means we have elongated these two carbons here. So four carbon molecule now becomes six carbon molecule. So that means melanyl CoA carbon is added towards the carboxyl side and you are pushing the red colored carbons on the other side. The red colored carbons coming from acetyl CoA. So they are pushed on the other side. So we have a six carbon molecule now. So, how many carbons we want? We want 16 carbon palmitate. So, we just have 6 carbon. That means we need 10 more carbons. So, how to get those 10 more carbons? That means you need to bring 10 more melanyl CoA molecules. Sorry, uh, we, uh, we need to bring 5 more melanyl CoA molecules because each melanyl CoA is going to contribute 2 carbons because one of the carbon is released as carbon dioxide. So, out of 3 carbons in a melanyl CoA, one carbon is released as carbon dioxide, you are retaining two carbons. That means in order to get 16 carbon palmitate, so what we have is now six, uh, six carbons, we need 10 more carbons, that means we need um, five more melanyl CoA molecules. So that means five more times condensation decarboxylation, reduction, dehydration, reduction, it has to go on. And that is what is shown here. So one more time here, condensation decarboxylation, reduction, dehydration, reduction. So our fatty acid, this 6 carbon will be become uh, 8 carbon here, right? And then second time if you are doing the reaction, so again this becomes a 10 carbon now. And third time if you do, so it will become 12 carbon. Fourth time if you do, it will become 14 carbon. And fifth time if you do, it will become 16 carbon fatty acid. So this is how every time, every spiral of these reactions, that is condensation, decarboxylation, reduction, dehydration, reduction. So if you repeat that, every time you bring in melanyl CoA, you are adding two to carbons more. That means your fatty acid is elongated by, uh, elongating here to 16 carbon. So that is what happens. So we have a 16 carbon palmitate here. So there is a palmitate which is 16 carbon present in the ACP position. Now what happens? Thioesterase enzyme, it brings water and break the molecule. That means it is going to remove this, it is going to break this bond here and then release palmitate. So 16 carbon palmitate is released and now look at the carbons present in 16 carbon palmitate. So all these are black color here, so which is indicating melanyl CoA carbons. And see the last two carbons, they are red in color, they are red in color, that means they are coming from acetyl CoA molecule. So, that means in a palmitate molecule, in a fatty acid synthase complex, so last two carbon, ultimate and penultimate carbon, say out of 16 carbon, 16th and 15th carbon, they are coming from acetyl CoA, original acetyl CoA molecule, unmodified one, rest of them are all coming from melanyl CoA. How do you get melanyl CoA in the first place by acetyl CoA carboxylase? It is also coming from acetyl CoA. So if you go by that way, if you will ultimately who is the donor of uh, all the carbons present in the palmitate, it is acetyl CoA. But if you are tracking these carbons, which, which all the carbons present in palmitate is coming from uh, acetyl CoA molecule, which of them are coming from melanyl CoA molecule? If you look at melanyl CoA contribution here. So, 1 to 14 are from melanyl CoA, 15 and 16 are from acetyl CoA molecule. So, this is how a fatty acid is synthesized on one side of the fatty acid synthase. On the right side, what I have explained is on the right side and the left side, same thing will go on. That means another palmitate molecule will be released on the left side. So, at a time, there will be two palmitate molecules which will be released. So this is very efficient process that is why whenever we consume carbohydrates in excess quantities in uh, no time efficiently fatty acids are synthesized and these fatty acids are 
attached to glycerol molecule to make a triacyl glycerol. So the synthesis of triacyl glycerol, I have a video, link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing in the upper corner there. Okay. So this entire thing is a fatty acid synthesis process which is also referred as the de novo synthesis of fatty acid. Now what is the take home message here? What are the things that you need to remember in this particular fatty acid synthesis process? Note that fatty acid synthesis is directly and indirectly it is uh, promoted by insulin molecule. So the insulin is the anabolic carbon, it's going to promote fatty acid synthesis in the liver by keeping your glucokinase active, PFK1, PFK2 active, pyruvate kinase active, uh, uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex active, citrate lyase active, pentose phosphate pathway active and fatty acid synthase complex active. All these process mediated by insulin will make sure that fatty acid is synthesized using excess carbohydrates. Now, Fatty acid synthase complex has got two subunits like the left side means the two functional division on the left side and on the right side. On the right side you get one fatty acid, on the left side you get another fatty acid. Now how do you track carbons? So if you look at the uh, saturated fatty acid which is synthesized here, 16 carbon saturated fatty acid vomitate. So 1 to 14 carbon are coming from melanyl CoA and 15 and 16 carbon is coming from acetyl CoA. Always remember acetyl CoA red color carbon it is going to contribute last two carbons in a fatty acid molecule. First to the 14, 1 to 14 is contributed by melanyl CoA molecule. Now how do you get melanyl CoA? Melanyl CoA you get from acetyl CoA carboxylase enzyme and uh, melanyl CoA is a 3 carbon molecule so out of 3 carbon one carbon is coming from carbon dioxide and rest two carbons are coming from acetyl CoA molecule. So what will happen to the carbon that came from carbon dioxide present in the melanyl CoA? So that can be asked in the exam. So the carbon dioxide present in the melanyl CoA as it gets into the fatty acid synthesis process, it is released in condensation decarboxylation process. That means carbon dioxide present in the carbon dioxide carbon present in melanyl CoA cannot become part of a fatty acid. It never becomes part of a fatty acid because it is released every time in condensation decarboxylation reaction. Now what are the reactions that are repeated in a fatty acid synthesis process? So there are four reactions that are repeated every time. One is condensation decarboxylation, other is reduction, third is dehydration and the fourth is reduction. You got to remember this in sequence. Condensation decarboxylation, reduction, dehydration, reduction. So this process will uh, repeatedly going on to make a long chain fatty acid. Now how many molecules of NADPH plus that you need to make a palmitate molecule? As you can see here, so in the first spiral of reaction, condensation, decarboxylation, reduction, dehydration, reduction. So there are two reduction here, one reduction and the other reduction here. So that means two NADPH plus two H plus molecules needed in one spiral that so then this is the second spiral so two more NADPH plus that means four NADPH plus by now after that you run five more spiral here that means five multiplied by two so that means it is ten more NADPH plus so ten plus two plus two here so fourteen so there are fourteen NADPH plus H plus that are needed to make a palmitate molecule so out of Sorry, for to make a 16 carbon palmitate, you need 14 NADPH plus 14 H plus molecule. How do you remember that? Yeah, what if I, if uh, examiner changes the number of carbons? All you need to do is take out two from the total number of carbons present in a fatty acid. If it is a palmitate, which is 16 carbon, take out two in that 16, so it becomes 14. So 14 NADPH plus H plus needed for palmitate synthesis. If we have fatty acid is stearic acid, 18 carbon, so take out 2 from 18, so we got 16, so 16 NADPH plus H plus needed for palmitate, sorry, uh, stearic acid formation. Like this, you can know how many NADPH H plus molecules are needed to make a fatty acid of a specific number. Most commonly synthesized fatty acid is a palmitic acid, so and now you know how to track a carbon in a palmitic acid. 
So 1 to 14 is from melanyl CoA, 15 and 16 is from acetyl CoA and the melanyl CoA carbon dioxide group is released as carbon dioxide that is the same carbon dioxide which was uh, used by acetyl CoA carboxylase that means carbon dioxide can ne never become part of your fatty acid. So this is how this is what is all about fatty acid synthase complex. I hope this video has helped you. If you have any questions, so kindly let me know in the uh, comment uh, so that I can address that question. If you have any specific uh, request, you can make that request in the comment section. So I hope this big board here, so it has helped me to explain all these reactions. So that's uh, quite helpful for me at least like uh, I could not able to do this in a smaller board in my previous office. So thanks again and uh, I will see you in my other video. Till then you take care.